This is The Last Campfire. Uh, it's the latest game from Hello Games, uh, the makers of No Man's Sky. And, you know, game studios tend to have a, a, well, they've got a tendency to make similar types of games, to sort of pick a wheelhouse and make games that sort of build on each other's, uh, you know, like, like successes. Um, you, you look at a game like, uh, a game company like, say, um, Supergiant, you know, all of their games have this uh, sort of isometric 2D art style. Uh, they all have this heavy, you know, narration. Um, and while the mechanics are pretty different between their games, there's also, you know, a lot of similarities. And you feel like, oh, they're building on their past successes, taking what they did well, and then building something new on top of that, but really still leaning on the stuff they know that they can do. Um, you see that with, um, say, Remedy, for instance. I just, you know, played a bunch of Control. And it's really similar. You can see the DNA of Max Payne bleeding into Alan Wake, bleeding into uh, a Quantum Break, bleeding into Control. It's like they are effectively the same game with different twists on it, which is great because that team is really good at making that kind of game. And each time they make it, they make it better and to the point where they're making these world-class, uh, you know, just ridiculous over-the-top high production values, um, you know, uh, experiences. Hello Games is crazy, because <laughs> not only was their first game, No Man's Sky, this ridiculous over-the-top, you know, scribble-knots level of ambition and audacity to try something nobody else has tried before. Um, after they did that, instead of making another game that built on that technology, they made another game that is completely different. So I haven't played this yet, but I've watched the trailers. I think this is a cute little linear adventure game puzzle platformer maybe uh, i don't know everything about it because obviously i haven't played it yet uh, i don't have a continue option on this menu but the fact that they decided to make a game like this instead of another no man's sky is pretty audacious and kind of impressive especially if this game turns out to be good so here we go Yep. It's beautiful so far. This is the part of the game where you contemplate the meaning of silence. This makes me think of the beginning of Eco for some reason. A group of people straying into some kind of mysterious, ruined looking landscape. And maybe one of them, one of them is the protagonist. <laughs> and not everybody else is going to be important. So Oddwell is comparing um, Hello Games to uh, Unknown World, who made a Sudoku game, then Natural Selection, then Subnautica. Uh, I didn't actually know that those games were made by the same people, uh, and that, I find that pretty impressive too. So Packler and I have been talking about the fact that um, that I treat streaming as a hobby and not as a potential career or a, a, a chance to make it big and get famous. And uh, you know, points it out that, that you know a lot of people who are content creators on video platforms like these, uh, they really do seem very focused on the on the potential to get famous. And uh, and he's saying this kind of you know a little bit refreshing to realize that you don't have to do that. You know, you can get into a place like this and not have your goal be to get famous and to be, you know, rich and successful. Like, you can just do this because it's fun. And uh, I'm a big advocate for that. I like, I like doing things just because they're fun. It's, you know, one of my, uh, oh man, no, I'm adrift. 
one of the things that's tough about some of the games that I play is, you know, they've got these um, motivations built into them where it's like it's, you know, acquisitive, it's collecting things, it's, it's trying to progress and succeed that sometimes can run counter to the more fun way to play the game. And, uh, you know, like, I appreciate games like, say, Hard, Hard, uh, Hard Space Shipbreaker that try there really... There is a place oh. where the lost embers go. I'll finish that thought in a sec. Oh, wait. No. Oh, I get to progress this dialogue at will. Never mind. I'll keep talking. Um, where it's like they'll, they'll actually actively counteract or, or try to counterbalance some of those uh, some of those motivations so that you're able to find a middle ground where you're just having fun all the time. Um, but there are other games that, you know, that aren't as good at that where, you know, the, the sort of the lizard brain motivations of the game, things like, you know, you know progress, acquisition, making the numbers go up, are so strong and they, and they kind of pull counter to the fun part of the game that, you know, sometimes I'm not able to finish a game because I got so pulled into those motivations that I lost the fun and I ended up, you know, drifting away. And, you know, it's easy to say that's my fault, but it's also, at least to some degree, uh, the developer's fault for, for not ha you know, not finding the fun and balancing the game against that. Um, and so I, I kind of see, you know, Twitch and YouTube in, in a really similar way. It's like, there's a way to have fun with them, but if you get way too into, uh, you know, the idea of success. Now, if you really are genuinely trying to do it as your job, you know, and, and you're really, you know, pouring all of your effort into trying to be a really great content creator and making real things that people really value in a way that they don't value, you know, uh, everything else um, that's on the platform. Like, that's great. That's awesome. Absolutely admire people for that. Uh, because it, I follow some really great YouTubers who are super good at it, and they're good at it because they care about being really good at it, and they devote a lot of time and resources to, to being really good at it. But I still, I do like it, you know, I find it refreshing to, you know, uh, at the same time to realize that you can enjoy things like this without necessarily caring about whether you're massively successful. Um, hmm. <laughs> so Randacord says, uh, it's wild to me that you're running the game we watch, operating as the host of the stream, guiding the conversation and, and such, and acting as the producer, controlling all the additional elements of the show on screen, which I don't do a very complex version of that on my stream here because I'm trying to have fun. When I'm running the State of Decay 2 stream, there is a lot going on, <laughs> and, and and you'll find. I mean, some, you know, not all the streams we do for State of K two are all that good because sometimes I'll I'll sort of lose the thread. Like there was, I know there was one that we did a few months ago where I was trying to play the game, produce a stream, and read the patch notes myself. And at the end of that, I realized I was just running around in circles reading the patch notes. It didn't wasn't very interesting. Nobody wanted to watch me play, and I realized, you know what? I don't have to do every single job. I can have someone else read the patch notes while I play, and that's fine. And, you know, learning to let go of some parts of the job, so letting other people do them, you know, so that I can do my part a little better, it's it's worthwhile. Letting go of things, delegating, is actually good. And, you know, I spent most of my career as um, either, e either a, an individual contributor as a designer on a team or as a lead of a team that is very small where the lead is doing a lot of hands-on work himself. Um, and I re got really used to the idea of me doing everything, like me just accomplishing a lot and having lots of jobs, and that I get done, and I impress everyone with how much I got done in a day. That was the main uh, way that I proved that I was good, and now that I'm in this uh, design director role um, on State of K2, I, I have to actively resist that, because I am most useful when I don't have a bunch of hands-on jobs that are distracting me from the bigger picture and so at first it was really hard i just wanted to do everything i i you know scripted half the missions in the new on-ramp of the juggernaut edition because i felt like i needed to constantly be doing something in order to prove my worth and i'm slowly learning that backing away from trying to do everything at once is actually good for me good for the team other people actually get to have more control over their jobs and i'm not in there trying to do everything you know for them it's a better way to be, so I'm slowly learning that. On my own stream, though, you know, low ambitions, low stakes. As the light begins I'll do whatever I want. Oh, what's happening in this game? I've just been off on a tirade. All right. So, uh, wait, is this me? Oh, who are these little dudes? Okay, I'm already intrigued. I want more cute dudes. I am here for the cute dudes. 
and the van, because standing still made them feel helpless. Ooh, we've got some uh, super giant energy here, <laughs> with the the narration sort of responding to what I do in real time. Well, the phrase "cute dudes" reminded me of something. So I worked on this um, this game, this mobile game that was kind of like a visual novel um, when I was uh, when I was at Glue, and there was uh, the, like our art. Basically, it was it was, a, it was a dating sim, and you had a female character, a straight female character, who was. Uh, interested in meeting men and so uh, our art director had to google hot dudes uh, in order to get um, art reference and um, he had to do it at home he couldn't do it at work the wall glistened the painting showed embers on a sacred journey embers must be those little dudes I noticed that the um, the controller uh, image they used, they didn't put an A button there or an X button. They just showed which of the face buttons it is. So you can use any controller you want, and they don't have to know which one it is. It is always kind of funny to me when um, a PC game will commit to one particular controller that they assume everyone's using, and it's different ones each time. Sometimes it's an Xbox controller. Most often it's an Xbox controller, but sometimes you get some PlayStation aficionados. Ember felt so afraid and alone that it was a relief to find someone to talk to. Yeah. Ember froze, almost too frightened to look away, when they noticed a small satchel. Huh. Ember's genderless. felt heavy. Ember looked inside. The statue shone brightly in the light. I love the effort they put into like making like very commonplace parts of the game a little bit special. Like the way that the um the subtitles they sort of missed away had to reveal the next subtitle. Like you don't have to do stuff like that, but but when you put extra effort into things that are that people are very accustomed to, very commonplace, it, it adds this sort of like polished sheen to your game that that makes it stand out above above the others so i've got some kind of statue i am talking so much i'm not actually engaging with the game let's see if i can get there a little a bit more into it on the floor. ember noticed something wrong oh yeah look at that Oh, so you got little tactile puzzles. Okay. It's kind of like the room. There was a round space where something used to fit. Ah, uh, yep. To Ember's delight, the golden statue slid perfectly into place. See what kind of game this is going to be. So it is an adventure game with puzzles, but it looks like there are going to be some inventory puzzles because I had to pick the statue out of my bag. But it looks like more of the puzzles are going to be not not quite like the witness, but you know along those lines where you engage with something and then you figure out something tactile and Ember left. physical. Even sorry for the stranger now alone in the dark. stairway opened into a dark forest. Ember could feel fear taking over. They'd washed up alone, somewhere very unfamiliar. So we've got, we've got folks, so 
a lot of folks in the chat right now are talking about how they're already emotionally engaged with these characters and, and are feel, getting feels over them. Kind of like this reminds me a little bit of the beginning of Ori in the Blind Forest, uh, because it, it's another game that sort of like has characters that are kind of proportioned this way and are really trying to pull at your heartstrings. And I've got Oddwell in there, uh, kind of making fun of the way the character talks, saying, oh, it's Dungeons and Dragons. Um, so I don't know if the sort of the W-like R's that they're doing are meant to sound childlike, or there's actually a pretty common English accent that replaces R's with W's. Not, it's not really part of the accent, it's more like, because of, there's lots of different ways you could form an R and uh, w with, with your mouth. And there's a particular British accent that, and I don't know which one it is or anything like that, that actually because of the way they form their R's, it's much easier for somebody to grow up making W's um, and, and get into that habit and, and for that to last into adulthood. Like there's, oh, I forgot the name, the first host of um, uh, Penn and Teller's Fool Us, that guy, he has W's for R's and he's a famous orator, you know, I mean, he, he gets up and he talks all the time for his job. Nobody thinks there's anything weird about it. Um, but yeah, he's, he's, he's got that. And so I'm wondering if this character might just have that kind of accent where their R's are like W's. Ember felt like they were being watched. I'm gonna run! Oh no! That's what I would do too when I was a kid. I went to a dark, scary place. I'd just run. Ah! Oh, my little run is so cute! Yeah, I do agree. It's probably... Like, the W's are probably just to make the character more adorable. As Ember approached, the flames seemed to call out. What? What? With a feeling like falling, the forest had slipped away. Ember felt lost in darkness and ruin. can do this. I don't know what value that has. Can I climb this? Aha, I can. Everything about this game is cute. The caged flame stoked new hope in Ember. So, classic thing where, oh my gosh, these animations. The thing where you unlock one door and then create a shortcut with that door so that you don't have to unlock it again and then you can unlock another door. Oh, somebody had so much fun animating this game. I could just feel the fun they were having. Hope was almost within reach. So much a, the flame well. spoke and Ember listened. And now I'm back here. So there is a lot of technical cleverness to this game. Like, even though at a glance this isn't the kind of game you'd imagine Hello Games making because their previous game was such a technical tour de force. You can see the expertise of their studio in here with, like, you know, the weird little transitions, hopping from level to level, all of the crazy rendering stuff, like the the weird rim lighting on the uh, on the bushes, and just how ridiculously smooth everything is. Uh, you can see their their technical chops. I should recommend this game to Daniel Floyd the because. Not only is it adorable, and he likes adorable games, but it also really showcases a lot of a lot of animation um, sort of maxims. Was it trying to escape? Come back! 
Come back. We're leading the way. Come here. Boink, 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 boink. Oh. Oh, wait, what? Oh, I thought it was another dead one. I can resurrect these guys? At least the ones that aren't skeletons. The campfire flickered into life. Ah, who are you? The ghost spoke. Hope has returned to a forlorn. I will warn them until they choose to move on. Ember looked to the ghost for answers. This is a place between places to travel through as your light fades. Oh, I'm, am I in purgatory? But none have passed on in a long time. So, did I come here with my friends because we're all going to purgatory? Or did the fact that I got lost in a dangerous place mean that I alone ended up in purgatory? The Forest King now holds us here, and those who linger will turn forlorn. Again, that word, forlorn. The forlorn are those who lost their way along the path. If you find them, send them to me and I will guide them. I am just a guide along the way to fan the flame. So many lost embers have I seen. More than I could help. Ember thought of those they loved, those they'd left behind. There are others lost along their journey. Find them and I will guide them. Step backwards, little Ember. Look behind. Upon a small grassy cliff rests a forlorn. So I imagine that this right here must be the last campfire. And we've got some blankets here. One of them has got a forlorn or a former forlorn sitting on it. What do you bet that I've got six more to find? You can see, oh yeah, at the top of the screen, we've got these slots. Three of them solid, three of them dotted. Not sure what that means exactly. So when does it look behind? Did it mean look behind me and go this direction? Oh, oh yeah, right there, up on the cliff. So how do I... Let's go this way. Oh, I expected this to just let me go to where that forlorn was, but is that a forlorn or is that somebody else? Looks different. How many different animations did they need to make for climbing different things? Oh, Oddwell points out that uh, because I came on a small boat, that boat might have been something like Charon's boat, or, you know, the boat in, in Spiritfarer where you know its job is to take me to the afterlife and i got waylaid along the way you could totally see that being what's going on is that a forlorn frog okay this is definitely feeling like no man's sky you got weird animals to interact with oh and oh there's somebody over here too all these things i can't reach Oh, hey, a person. The ember was curious. Where did you wake up? I'm headed for the crossroads. It's not far, I think. I've heard there's a nest there. A safe place. Um, is, can I do something with this down here? Oh yeah, so it's not a forlorn frog, it's just a statue of a frog and a hint for a puzzle. Oh, 
here we go. Oh, wow, okay. The stranger was trapped, caught in a maze. Interesting, when it makes me move, it draws a little path for me. That's so funny. Hmm. That might not have been smart. So, am I looking for a way to get on the other side of that thing? Uh, no, no, it looks like what I want to do is get it into that slot down below. And then the other one, or the further slot, maybe? So I can cross this entire bridge from left to right? Or like this one. It's hard to make sense of this place. I can pull it back here, but I don't think that's what I'm supposed to do. I feel like maybe this is supposed to go to the left. What am I missing? I don't know why I did that exactly. So I can't rotate these things. get back up there if I need to. Oh, of course. If I put, pull this over here and then rotate it, oh, if I, okay, hold on. Let's pull this guy off. Dang it. Okay, it only wants to settle in grid squares. Now, this is a pretty complicated puzzle for this early in the game. I mean, I don't know, maybe some of you are just, uh, you've instantly seen the solution and uh, think it's hilarious that I haven't yet, but. Okay, so I know a way to rotate these. Problem is, that's uh, not quite enough. So I can't push it in. Okay, so what's my goal? My goal is to make that ladder accessible. So, how do I make that happen? I can either try to push... Push one of these... Uh, like, like, I can push the one that's up above me right now, up ahead of me. I can push that to the right, and then come around from the right side. That's probably the way to do it. And so the question becomes, how do I get on the left side of that wheel so I can push it to the right? Well, it means I probably have to go this direction. But then how do I do that? Is there anything about this? Like, can I... Oh! Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Nope, 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 nope. I've got an idea. All right, so we raise this up to that point. Then we can push this one on top of it. Mm 
right? I mean, that surprisingly worked. Oh, but now, can I... Weirdly, that actually works. That is crazy looking, but I kind of buy it in this world. Wait, but then how do I... Oh, I know. So while it's facing this way, I push it forward one step. And then... Push it over here. The trail just kept on closing. I pull it here. This is so complicated. For, for this early in the game, look how complicated this is. So now, push that in there. Push that in there. Come around here. And then, the question becomes... How do I... Oh, wait, no. I know how to get to it. Like this. And compared to that first puzzle... <laughs> this one is over the top. Uh, comparing this to Dark Souls, which is kind of hilarious, because this is not this is obviously not a combat game. But he's pointing out how Dark Souls the also voice oh. was hoarse. I just need some time, I think, to see things clearly. How Dark Souls drops you right into situations that are very hard, uh, even when you're still just sort of getting your feet wet, because it wants you to sort of understand what kind of game it is, and and this this you know. Uh, this game is kind of doing a similar thing, but with the puzzles rather than with combat. The stranger's voice was hoarse. I just need some time, I think, to see things clearly. Okay, so I'm assuming that that character is eventually going to come back to the campfire. So I was, I was treating that like, well, this should be, that this would traditionally be easier because it's so early in the game. But it was also a hidden challenge. So maybe you actually are meant to expect it to be a little harder. Okay, oh, oh here I am with the old man. The fisherman murmured quietly between soulful breaths. Okay. The fisherman felt so useless. His former joys were hollow. Okay, so these things blow at you? Sitting out there every day by the pond. I'm assuming these things will blow out. Only the dark water to hear him talk. In that darkness, a glimmer flickered. So I'm betting I'm about to be screwed because I'm thinking. A thought beating like a drum. A thought that went round and round. I'm thinking that other thing's gonna blow this thing out. It all started with a frog. Every day by the pond, a constant reminder. That'll let me set the ember down. So this puzzle is so much easier than that other puzzle. I'm betting it's the fact that other puzzle was hidden that made it that difficult. I mean, you know what I mean. They felt like they could make it more difficult because it was hidden. Or that they actually needed to. That was the point of a hidden puzzle, was for it to be harder than usual. For a brief moment, the fisherman struggled to speak. He looked at Ember, hopeful. 
The fisherman spoke softly. There's a frog in that pond. A big one. Saw him grow from a tadpole. We were friends of a sort. Spent every day side by side. So much better at fishing than me, that frog is. Catches them before I can bait them. Oh, it makes me feel useless some days. The fisherman sighed. I've wasted so much time feeling like this. The old man looked carefully at the pond, at their rod, at Ember. Well, listen to me here, rambling on and on. It helps, though, telling someone. Thank you, Ember. If you need help catching anything, you just ask. Oddwell points out that they love that depth of field effect. It is interesting. It, is, it doesn't look like a typical blur. The way it's sort of like, you get almost like double vision with it. But that actually kind of is how certain kinds of blurs work with your eyes. All right. So he points out the frog. I wonder if I'm supposed to think about the frog in... Like, only after that puzzle, go back and find the frog puzzle. The ember was cured. I'm headed for the crossroad. I've heard there's a nest there. A safe place. All right. Nothing new with that guy. There's something cool over there. I don't know how to get to it. These walls are blocking me. I wonder if there's a way I can eventually learn to get past them. Wait, can I jump in the water here? The frogs can. I can't. I wonder if this is going to have a little bit of a Metroidvania structure where eventually I get the ability to cross things that I can't currently cross. Oh. Oh, that's the frog. The frog stared at Embo, its belly rumbling. Its eyes were fixed on Embo, but it seemed to mean no harm. Was this the frog that the fisherman spoke of? Ember could hardly ignore the rumbling from the frog's belly. Wonder if I can find a fish. Who are these guys? So I had to move the stick to take it all the way. I made a bridge somewhere. Oh, look at... Look at that! Look at that! Oh, that's adorable! Okay, so I pulled that lever. I extended a bridge. It looks like... I can't get there from here, though, so... That was necessary, but there's another way in. I can hop. Oh, I'm so cute. Okay, eventually I'll be able to get up there. Looks like I can't get into either of these caves. Alright, so it looks like... Maybe the frog is going to be the answer to something? Maybe if I find that frog of fish, he'll unlock one of these roots. Okay, so this is where I came from. So that actually, I want to go... I want to go the other way. I want to go up the stairs. So yeah, Audible points out that... Uh, that depth of field effect also helps everything look small. Oh, wait... Oh no, this is, okay, this is the original way I went, so maybe actually I do want to go further down that path. So I am getting these weird little graphical glitches, things flashing white periodically, that sort of thing. I'm not sure. Aha, uh -huh. okay, I remember seeing these guys. Okay, this is somewhere I wanted to be.
Okay, let's make this the last puzzle for this video. The stranger had been forgotten. So I can put this anywhere I want. Oh, okay. They tried to follow as best they could. them when they fell behind okay so what I want to do maybe okay so they move at the same rate I wonder can I just drop this anywhere okay, yeah so I can move all three of them at once and then freeze this one in the right spot and move the other two. There we go. how they basically just rather than trying to weave all of these puzzles into one giant level and have them all coexist they just have each puzzle exist almost in the, the stranger looked at ember with surprise in the soul of these characters Someone came back for me thank you so you interact with the character and then you get a level out of the character but then the overarching level can be much simpler and just about exploring and navigating so it looks like we got people gathering over there. Are they the ones that I've already rescued? So Lala Lollipop makes a uh, makes a point that actually yeah, I thought of this early on too. This reminds her a lot of the game Rhyme, and yeah, that is true. It's like I feel like you know, not only has it got sort of this cute character and this sort of almost glowy magical world that's really beautifully rendered, but the kinds of puzzles that you have that involve you know manipulating objects and 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 sort of trying to navigate your way to a goal having each of these you know these separate little puzzles segmented around the world that is very much like rhyme if if you're watching this game and you're interested in it not only should you check this game out but you should also check out rhyme when i played rhyme the thing i was thinking the entire time was that 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 game was you know, back when i was working on the where the wild things are game years ago um Rhyme was basically the kind of game I had in my head that I wish that Where the Wild Things Are had turned into. So when I played it, it was actually really satisfying to see that somebody else had made the kind of game that I actually wanted to make at that point in my career. Um, okay, yeah, so I said that was the last puzzle we were going to do this session, so I should I should actually uh, stick to that. Though I did have a qu uh, question from Awesome Twitch Dude that's about State of Decay 2. He asks, uh, do you make three versions of State of Decay 2 for each platform? Steam, Epic Games, etc. Um, so you do have to, the, the game does have to be subtly different to be in each of those platforms to take advantage of their separate multiplayer systems and, and things like that or they're you know be able to work with their uh achievement i guess we are using no i think i'm probably wrong about that that is true a lot of the time we are actually using xbox live for all of our multiplayer so i think that's actually kind of the same though i think we have to handle that connection differently on each of those platforms so i'm not a technical guy there are technical guys who could actually explain you know uh technical people could actually explain how this works at a gut level at, at a deep level i can't at all but there, there do have to be differences. Uh, the achievement systems are different. There's, there's all kinds of reasons why they have to be different. But those problems, those differences between the platforms, I don't have to worry about those. Um, the you know the our tech director, the programmers, they set things up so that we make one version of the game, and then the build process, the automated build process, makes it compatible with all those different. Uh, places so so I don't have to do anything different for the game on Steam versus the game on on you know the Xbox versus the game on uh, on the Epic Store. Um, 
those differences are handled automatically. And that, I think that's true for a lot of engines. I mean, Unity really prides itself, I think, on the fact that it works on so many different platforms and you just make the game one time and then Unity handles, you know, it being put on, on, on all the platforms that you want it on. Packler says that uh, uh, they use Xbox Live to play State of K2 on Steam and their brother kept congratulating them on the achievements that, they, that he kept getting notifi notified about. It is kind of funny that, yeah, it's like when you're playing our game on Steam, I think you get Steam achievements, but I think you might also get Xbox Live achievements for it. Um, so, you know, yeah, very efficient, very efficient way to uh, get your achievements uh, going. But anyway, so let's let's quit this for now because I think we've done enough to really get a sense of what this game is about. And I don't want to spoil it for other people. I really want people to, uh, you know, be motivated to come and play it themselves, which means if I've solved all the puzzles for them, uh, there's less of that motivation. So we'll wrap this up. But uh, I get it. I'm really impressed that Hello Games is able to do such very different games with the same people, the same, you know, I assume that, that on, under the hood they've got a lot in common, but here on the surface, wow, are they different.